Hey, I'm Mike. I'm an illustrator and an author, and today we're going to talk about book cover design. Specifically, if you are an author who has always designed your own book covers, you're going to get a little bit of information on how you can do that better. Um, also, if you're an author who's always designed your own book covers and you are looking to pay someone, or if you are an illustrator and you want to know a little bit about book cover design, uh, we're going to talk about all that stuff and more uh, with some vampire fiction, um, some uh, some YA, some young adult uh, vampire uh, covers here from my man Anthony. Now, I am doing a book cover design for this gentleman, and I asked him to send me his old book cover designs, which he did himself, and this is his first time working with an artist. So I want to show you his actual instructions to me. Um, just so you can get it out and we can talk about the do's and the don'ts. Um, and it just because, just remember that like, just because I'm saying, well, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do this. Like if you were to commission me from work, I'm not going to chastise you. I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm trying to show you the process so that everybody can interact with everybody better and get, you know, get the job done the right way. You know, like improving communication or however you want to look at it. So, uh, this, uh, this guy's name is uh, Anthony Avina, and he writes all sorts of cool fiction, uh, little novellas. Now, this is the first cover. Oh, my pop filter is that was weird. I thought I was drunk or something. Did you see that thing just take off? <laughs> all right, so this is the first cover that he sent me um, from his Nightmare Academy series of novellas. And I can tell that he did this by himself, probably with the Kindle Direct Publishing. Uh, cover builder and to be honest I think he did a good job um, there there are some things that I would change uh, first of all um, I'd like to commend that that the readability is very good um, this color blue is maybe a little bit light um, I think that if we if we if we took that and made it just a little bit darker um, that just like that Readability is big, especially remember when it's on your screen and you're looking at it. Uh, what am I doing here? Let's kick down the brightness on that blue. There we go. Now see, just kicking that down a little bit uh, really pops out that text. And uh, you can see my wand settings weren't perfect and there's some erroneous pixels there. But just adjusting that a little bit, when that little thing gets pushed way down into this size, or whatever it's going to be on the website, uh, at least the, the reader has a shot at, at still seeing and understanding the cover. This isn't as important if you're uh, Jillian Flynn or something. If, if, you have a, if you're an established author, your cover, you can do things that you, you can't get away with when you're a beginning author. Um, I mean, I'll use, look, I use my book cover as an example. Like, this is the cover I did for my, it's kind of a black comedy um, I don't know if you guys can see this. There's links below. But I made a cover where I I wanted to make sure that when it was zoomed all the way out, you could still read it. So it's black on white, which is the highest contrast as, as it gets. And I'll do a contrast chart and show you which colors work on what. But you want to zoom this thing out. I know that you probably can't do that inside the cover builders, but it's real important to have as much contrast as possible. And uh, the best way to do that, when appropriate, is to have black text on white on a white background or, or, or a white background with black text and then it will ha it'll be the, the most readable um, so as you can see just a little change there we, we we've improved the cover a little bit the next problem that I have is that we have a stock photo here which is fine but this doesn't say this says a lot of things and not just vampire to me if and I'm all for using a stock photo um, but make sure it's not blurry if you don't if people don't know who you are and you don't have a marketing machine behind you you really have to you have to be on the nose you have to you have to kind of spell it out and you're not and because of that you can't be as metaphorical and you can't be as artistic and you're not going to be able to take as many chances because they must know what you're about um, obviously if you're a beginning author or even a book cover designer, like your price points are going to be much lower than the pros. But, you know, you, it, you, you have to make it obvious. Spell it out. Um, if you're, 
I wish I had seen the uh, the original Twilight covers before Twilight was its big deal. Because I, re I remember... Let me see. Here, I pulled up the, uh, the Twilight covers. This is the one that I always saw from the first book. And I didn't read these books. I couldn't tell you whether they're good or bad. But I can tell you these covers are excellent. Um, they're, they're beautiful. You know, they're very, they're very artistic. They're very evocative. I'm, I'm sure that they are story centric, but these are probably not the original covers to the books before they became a phenomenon. I'm sure they were much more obvious that it was vampire fiction. Um, one thing that I do want you to notice is that all of them are very simple. And we'll get to why that's important. Well, maybe not important, but I mean, even this, I don't know what this is. This is another obviously popular vampire series. Let's see what we have here. See, this screams gothic and you have these, you know, you don't, you don't need, you might not say immediately that this is vampire, but it's definitely some type of horror and blood is in the title. So blood's in the title, you don't need to be as obvious, right? When it basically, it's vampires in the title. title. So you just need it to be, you know, look like Castlevania or something. That's what I think of when I, I'm a gamer, you know, that's what I think of when I think uh, vampire. So anyways, what I would like to see, uh, if he were going to do this over himself, is that this said a little bit more vampire, because it doesn't say vampire here. Nightmare Academy certainly speaks to a horror or some type of, uh, you know, there's nothing, it doesn't matter what your title is. I'm not here to tell you how to title a book, but I, I do know that it could benefit from that that design. And we just made this color darker. So this is, I mean, this is good. I mean, it, it's functional. Is it amazing? Or you're not, you know, you're probably not going to win any book cover awards, but this this is really pretty good. This is really a pretty good self-made cover. And these are the other two that he sent me, and I have some real problems with these. Um, well. Uh, What's here, you do have, uh, this image does have a certain supernatural flair to it that is an improvement over the other one, but as you can see, this text is just lost. You can't see, I, I, I could barely read his name. Um, and granted, I'm, it's probably going to appear a little bit more high contrast to me because I'm working on a drawing tablet and the backlight is really strong, so the whites are actually white. So it's probably slightly more readable on regular old Amazon. But it's still completely lost. And then here you have all of this text sitting on top of. I mean, we won't even talk. You know, I'm I'm fine with this sort of suggesting the supernatural. I'd still like to see her not wearing a red dress or having blonde hair or you know just sort of being more vampiric in a way. Even if it was just black. Well, here we can we actually I'll do all that. So I'm gonna select um, this text. And then I'm going to copy it out to its own layer. Use some comic book macros here. And then down here, let's, uh, here, let's just do this. Imagine for a second if we had just made these couple of little changes. Uh, this is kind of a, it's kind of a red color, so I think I'll go purple gray. Maybe like that. Uh, whoops. There we go. Okay. Sorry. This won't be, this won't be perfect. And now if we reduce the opacity on that thing, so much more readable that is. These are not, you know, these aren't changes that you couldn't make yourself. You know, you'd probably want to make this a little bit more stylized or whatever, but then here. There's a million different ways to do this. I'm just using the, the most simple to, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, 
just for readability. Uh, again, now let's talk about content. Um, and these covers, neither one of them are, the, are, are really an appropriate dimension. Um, I'm not sure if this is one cover and two stories, because it's a, it is a perfect square. Or if these are, I'm just going to treat it like it's two separate covers, because his name is on both, but it was one file. So I guess it's two separate co covers. And, uh, when you use, here's, here's a, a little, a little thing. Just imagine yourself as a buyer. I know by looking at this, that this is a stock photo. Even if it's appropriate, even if it's evocative, even if that's the face you want on your character. And it's a real problem to know that someone is using a stock photo. Because to me, that says they didn't want to spend any money. Um, and unless you really know what you're doing, you probably shouldn't be... You need to invest in your books. Uh, the cover is the, the most important thing you should invest in. And you can get... I would say the most I would ever charge someone to do a, a book cover is if they want physical art. Like a physical... Let's just say not an oil painting. An oil painting is a different thing. It gets very expensive to produce. Um, especially if they want some big, you know, uh, three or four times size oil painting. Some real piece of art. That might be very expensive. You know, like the cover, the original cover of, uh, of American Psycho, that beautiful, strange painting. You know, that might cost, you know, 1200 bucks or something to commission. Um, but maybe more, maybe 2500 bucks. Uh, but let's just say I was going to do real physical art, paper art, or I was going to do an ink painting or something. Someone is really, 400 bucks is about the ceiling that you're going to, you're going to pay for a book cover from a really good designer, from someone who can paint, who can, or whether it's digital or whatever, you know, that will do a, a million, that's the most. But on average, you're going to spend between one and two hundred dollars, and it's going to be worth it. Um, I, you know, depending on what you need, I, I routinely charge people 75 bucks to do book covers when they don't want, uh, you know, anything too, too fancy. No physical art involved, just digital. Um, and contemporary book cover design tends to really be based more on illustration and color theory than on, uh, or, and sometimes photo manipulation rather than creating art. Uh, but that's kind of the norm if you look at, you know, look at like John Green's covers or something in YA. Like, uh, it's, it's, you know, they kind of look like the cover of a, like digital produced New Yorker magazine art or something, you know, kind of vector based stuff. Um, and that's not expensive to produce. It's just you just have to have the know-how, and that's what you're paying for. And there's this famous uh, little story where a woman's in a coffee shop and she sees Pablo Picasso, and she walks up to him and she says, uh, "Here, I have this little napkin. Could you draw something for me?" And he says, "Yeah." And he draws out a little turtle or whatever, and then he goes, uh, "That'll be twenty-five thousand dollars." And she says, "Well, it only took you ten seconds to make that." And he says, "No, it took me my whole life." And that's very true. Very, very, very true. You know, what I could do now in 10 minutes a year ago seemed impossible, you know, and so who knows what next year, the next year, next year will bring. Um, and, and that's kind of, the, that's the way, our, you know, everything works. But anyways, back to this. So let's, uh, and know that, uh, like I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean here. When, when talking to people who are, or I'm not demanding that if you design your own books, that you should, uh, that, that you can't do it yourself. I'm just saying keep these things in mind. Um, this kind of looks like uh, Evan Rachel Wood, doesn't it? A little bit. Um, so, uh, what do we have for these two covers? Uh, the first one is, like, you don't want edge-to-edge edge, uh, coverage there. You don't want clipping because you don't know. You're, if you only put your books in Amazon, then maybe you'll know the, how the cover is going to be displayed all the time. But typically, you want to leave at least a little bit 
a gap on each side for the text in case your cover is going to get it's going to get propagated they're going to take that image even though it's super low, low res they're going to put it all, all all over the internet and uh and that's that's no good um here we have a huge imbalance between this text size and this text size i will say that they are all oh here's super good super good this font this font and these two fonts yeah these are clear, clearly different colors i was right are uh let me just back this up all of these fonts are the same on each cover that's super 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 good um, you certainly can have different fonts you can have handwritten fonts on a cover you can have all sorts of things um, here i'll use my book as an example if you can see it in the little thing this is everything on my on my cover is handwritten um, this white text is actually a real ink drawing that was scanned in and the black text is a textured brush here that I use here in Manga Studio to make comic book outlines like the, uh, the, the, the boxes for the, for the images. Um, but it's all handwritten in my handwriting. Uh, even the digital stuff and the hand stuff is all just done by my hand, so it doesn't matter. But you have to be really, really, really careful when you start blending different fonts together. If you don't know what you're doing, it becomes a disaster. The best thing to do is if you don't know, just use the same font for everything in different sizes. You can warp it. You can do all kinds of, doesn't matter what you do with it, right? Typography is a really, really nuanced, crazy thing. And I don't know that much about it. I'm still an infant and I know enough to know when it's wrong. That's it. And then, and this takes all that away. Sure. It doesn't add a ton of variation, but, uh, um, another thing that you can do is you can just use the same fonts and then just use like stroke effects on the outside, you know, where you create like a little, like something like this, you know, on the outside of the font, if you want, if you want some variation. Um, another thing that you can do, like he, like he has done here, is that the spacing between the text, these are very close together. All of these, uh, this is very, very, very close. And then this, the kerning is farther apart. It's just a setting that you... You know, it's just a, a, a value that you use to space the text out. That's another great way of just using, getting the most mileage out of one font. So I think maybe the best practice is that you just try and do it all with one font. And if that's not going to work, then maybe use one other font. But I've seen people that have a font here, a font here, a font here, and that's, that's no good. So it's super good that he had the, uh, the, the presence of mind to use the fonts. Now this image I have less of a problem with, um, even though it's uh, kind of generically photo manipulated. And what I mean by that is that when you see airbrush only effects, so the way this is created right here is that, that there's some type of image that is masked over the top, and then it was revealed with just a generic airbrush that looks like this, a soft airbrush that looks like this. So somewhere along the way, I'm gonna just undo that, that just a few strokes of the pen. Oh, this layer is, see. We could paint that skin right back in. Um, and that says that to me, looking at the cover and to a lot of people, it's sort of like a generic old digital effect. It just looks old schooly. We know that it doesn't necessarily look bad, right? But we know it can be done better. So why isn't it done better? We know that we can create slashes in here or blood and it doesn't have to be, uh, photorealistic by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, for something to be good and you know think about how how much we appreciate when we see uh comic book drawings on on the on the internet i mean even if you 
you know, I mean, I'm a big comic, I, I can relate anything to a comic book drawing, but if something is done kind of, you know, I can't, ooh, that looks like a bird. Think about how, see how simple this was with these sort of high resolution brushes to create like a, like a blood splattered bird. Right? Let's see. It takes, what, two seconds we did it on an accident. You slap that thing in the middle of the cover and, on a white background and it's a book cover, provided you take the time to, to create a nice form. Um, so simple, it, things don't have to be complicated and that's, Part of the problem with photographs is that photographs are so dense with information. There's so much uh, text or uh, 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 texture in there that your actual message can get a little bit lost, for sure. So, I mean, imagine if we if we did something like this. Let me get out of this. Let's reduce the amount of information here so that we can. Because we couldn't add anything to these. Even when you add text on top of these full images, there's there's so much information there. It's hard to it's hard to deal with. That's why a lot of times on book covers, when you see an image, it's usually got all of all of the background removed. There's a lot of psychological thrillers that have like a you know a beach or whatever. Um, and certainly photographs are used, but you'll you'll see just go through go through Amazon the bestseller list. You'll see a lot of you know, reduced information photographs that, that just take one thing rather than stacking photographs on top of each other. Um, it's best, if you're not experienced, to have the least amount of information possible. You know, a very deft hand could take the, most, the busiest, craziest thing ever and make a great book cover out of it. But reduce, simplify, simplify, simplify. Don't try and get your whole story into the book cover. Um, all right. So let's see what we could do just by reducing the information in these photos. And I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to go to tonal correction. I'm going to go to posterization. And then I'm going to take down the gradients. Now, the colors here are obviously not correct. But just by reducing the information, um, they become more manageable. If you want, you can, like, you could theoretically think about giving her fangs or putting blood on this reduced, uh, and, and uh, what I just did with posterization is that I'm, I'm basically creating, uh, how do I say this without sounding like, I don't want to use technical jargon. All right. It takes ranges of value from light to dark and then assigns a color to broader ranges. So you have fewer colors making up the whole image. Does that make sense? And, but you don't get to decide what the colors are. It uses some weird math. So usually you'll have to like go in. So now that there are fewer colors, if I want to, I can select any one of these colors and make it, um, you want to make sure your color margin is set to zero. You can select any one of the colors and then you could change it to whatever you wanted. Um, it didn't get that behind there because I, well, never mind. <laughs> I don't, this isn't supposed to be a technical video, but that, that, that's an easy problem to solve. Um, so it's easier to make big, broad, sweeping changes the less information you have. Um, when you're trying to change, like trying to change colors like that in photo, it's trickier. It's not going to look as good. And then, watch this. Okay, wrong brush. Uh, you know, do whatever you want in there. That's not a good brush. Or if you want to create, you know, draw in, you, you can just draw in a simple, uh, uh, What have you. 
you know? Reduce that information. And this is a good way to get mileage out of stock photos. Because now, this photo in particular that worked for, and this sort of, uh, uh, what you might want to do is if, if, you're, if you're designing this yourself, you can tell that this is photo manipulation. You'll definitely want to get all those weird pixels out of there. But uh, you can take like the smudge tool in Photoshop or some type of uh, a blender tool. And, and you could just, uh, even if you don't know how to paint, you could like soften up the edges. And the way that I recommend doing that is using the same stroke everywhere you go. Um, if you're not no, artistically inclined, because it will look, uh, it'll look, it'll give it kind of an interesting look. I wouldn't go that way with it. I would actually go, would go this way with it in this particular piece. Uh, and then it would look cool. Um, and that doesn't take any, I mean, you don't have to know how to draw to do a lot of this stuff. That's another thing, you know, if you, you can design these covers yourself and not draw. Again, I'll never ever tell you that an artist wouldn't do a better job, but, you know, if you don't have the money or if it's just a small little, you know, this guy, uh, Anthony here, these are just uh, little novellas. It's not, it's not like this is a full novel, so he doesn't want to spend 200 bucks per book. And uh, he did a lot of really good things, you know, for himself, but, there, but, but definitely the readability was a huge issue, and... Uh, kind of too much information. If we took down some of the information, maybe maybe we could keep this stock photo and create, you know, add add something that would make them look a, a bit more vampiric, and then just use, you know, drawing some creepy trees that weren't a photo that this would read better. Um, simple stuff. You know, there's nothing. Uh, your your any design for a book cover can work. Um, and not that they're, that would be the optimal thing to do, but that would, you know, you can look at it and go, oh, that makes sense. But, uh, don't make, don't make covers with, with bad contrast. Don't make, uh, don't make covers with too much information where everything gets cluttered and you can't read it. Just imagine it being, imagine it being this small and saying, uh, can I read that or can I not read that? Uh, so, uh, the next thing is, I've, heard, let me make sure I've redacted, like I didn't want to give away any of his, any of his uh, story here. Yeah, I got it all redacted. So this is what he sent me when I asked him how how he. I was like, send me any artwork you have, even if you're not happy with it, just cause, just to give me an idea of where your head's at, your aesthetic, and uh, tell me about your about your book cover or how you see the book cover. So he gave a really good. Um, you know, impressive description. But a lot of times when people are working with an artist for the first time, they they ask for too many things to go into the cover. Um, bec or, you know, people are... This is like a famous thing. I'm used to, I do a lot of sequential art, and this is like a famous thing that people will think that you can just get an entire story into one comic page or one uh, storyboard page or whatever, and that's insane. Um, you, you can only get so much information into one flat 2D image. And I know that you want your whole story there, and sometimes, sometimes people are able to do amazing things. Like, uh, there's a, I didn't like the book at all by Cormac McCarthy, but there's this really minimal cover of the road that, like, tells the whole story, and it's like, I don't know, th three little, you know, little vector drawings and some stupid trees. But it tells you everything you want to know about the book. Um, and there are so many books like that that you, you can get a whole lot of information out of just a little bit of work. Um, but here he is asking me if this is possible. And I don't know if it's possible. But uh, he's asking me to merge. He wants like half the cover to be uh, uh, two characters sort of charging from the, the beaches of Southern California. And then another character... Uh, charging from the, let's, let's, uh, we, we've seen kind of covers like this, right? Let's concept this out. Let's just think, let's just think that, and he said he wanted it, he wanted it, uh, separated by sunlight because they're, uh, they're, they're vampires, right? Well, here we come to our first, our first problem. Sunlight is going to be white or yellow or orange. Okay. Let's see here. So it's a vampire book. Maybe we want a black background. We know half of the book is going to be a really like 
creepy, whatever. And then we're going to have to find a way to iconically represent the sunlight, which is fine. Let's just say that we have, somehow we're going to make that read as the sunlight. And here we have, uh, you know, creepy, creepy black and white forest. That would actually, maybe that would, that would work a little bit more. We have some creepy, whatever. How do I want to, how would I even do that? Well, here, let's, let's talk about what we have. Over here, we are supposed to have the beach. It needs to read Southern California. And it's a, a magic school. That's cloaked like the magicians. And it's Halloween. And so the bad guy, bad guy, bad guy, forest. And there's over here, there's two characters, two protagonists. One guy, one girl. All over here. And then you have bad guy forest over here. And then somewhere we're going to have to put, and then they're divided by the sunlight. And then we need to put the title and his name somewhere. Do we, are we starting to see a problem? I'm not saying that this can't be done. I'm saying that that's a big ask. <laughs> that, that yes, a, a, a book cover like this, I'm sure it can be done. You can, you can read all those things. But the first thing he told me is that this is sort of like the climax of the novel is this thing. Do you really want anything evoking the image of, of the climax of your novel uh, in your in your cover? Maybe you do. You know, uh, who am I to say? But to me, especially if I'm writing uh, some type of vampire, whoops, some type of, I'm going to move canvas here. If I'm writing a book that, that people aren't familiar with, uh, I want it to say vampire. I wanted to say fiction. I want the mood of the story. So, not all vampire fiction. Vampire isn't a genre. You know, it could be a vampire comedy. It could be a vampire mystery, a vampire heist novel. You know, why haven't we had one of those? That would be amazing. Like uh, Ocean's Twelve with vampires. That would be amazing. So. Uh, we're going to have to indicate kind of what's going on. Is this a, you know, a lot of vampire fiction is a teenage romance, YA teenage romance. I know that this is some type of, of YA, some type of a young adult thing. So if it's a young adult thing, you're usually going to have teenagers. And teenagers really like, I mean, look at, look at all the, the big YA books and those main characters. Like, do you want to feature those main characters on the front of the book? Probably. Um, you don't have to. But, I mean, this is this is the stuff that you need to put in. If you were an established franchise, you can get crazy, right? If this was Mockingjay Part 11, um, you know, you, you don't even need to put Suzanne Collins on the front of the book and it's going to sell a million copies. So, let's get crazy. And even those books, it's just... It's just a simple, you know, it's a very de beautifully designed, iconic, evocative, world-built 
pin. That's a part of the story. It's a part of everything. Um, so uh, more is not always better. Sometimes more is better. There's some busy covers that are that are really, really, really fantastic. I have a bunch of them uh, on my bookshelves. But remember, we're going to go to, I don't know, it's 200, 300 pixels. When we go down that small, how's all that stuff going to read? How's your cover? I think about all the text that you have to have over your cover. And, and you want to add all that stuff? Are you sure? As a self-published author? I don't know. If, it, if, when it's that tiny, it reads at least the genre that you are. If you find a way to make, but when you have three characters on a cover, uh, Southern California and some type of creepy four, I mean, it sounds cool. It sounds like a cool, amazing scene. You know, the sunlight divide. I get what, exactly where his mind was. You, I mean, it, it's, there's nothing wrong with the idea other than book covers get squashed down tiny, 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 tiny. I mean, if I had a big square audiobook, definitely could do it. 100%. I do like an RPG video game, you know, like pixel art, pixel art vampires at one side charging from the sand. Uh, you know, bad guy, Sephiroth-looking dude, charging the other way. Yeah, you could do it. But a 6x9 going down to 200 by 300 pixels? Mm, that's that's tricky. That's very tricky. So keep that in mind. Um, I mean, just writing this out. Like, I couldn't even write the things that... Now, in my mind, vampire thing... Right? Maybe this dividing line is, is somewhere that we could be. And maybe we can still do creepy desaturated forest. Let's think like Louisiana. Let me think like creepy. Now, if you and me, you're going to have black on one side. I don't know what blacks the move back there. I think if you went super desaturated, you could probably get you know, some kind of problem is that even if there's no characters yet, they're going to have to be somewhere. I was thinking like, uh, like two comic book drawings, sort of like a girl with a silhouette brush. I don't know. No, they need to be facing each other. Yes. Yeah, they're like, their shoulders are this way, and they're holding hands, and they're hunched forward. And then this is creepy dude. Tell him it's the Shredder.
really have to balance the colors, but title often oh, this has a big title to it. It's possible. But the problem with like creepy forest meets this is these color palettes fight. You have desaturated greens and grays and poop yellows and just all this grossness that goes into like creepy forest, boggy swamp. And then when I think Pacific Coast, like you, it's hard to get away from those Sherbert colors. And I can't think of two palettes that want to punch each other in the face more. Like, is there anything? So, I mean, you could desaturate it all, and maybe... Again, I'm just spitballing here. I'm trying to make a really difficult request make some kind of sense, and it is possible. But I think that what I would do... Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I may try and make this thing make sense. But uh, try and... If an artist comes back to you and says, Hey let pump the brakes like let's turn it down just a little bit and try and get you know two or three core moods or pieces of your story you know find me your mocking j pin and and let's start with that and then we can mess it up well, you know do it like the beatles wrote songs let's do it simply and then complicate it you know because we all can't we can't all be tool and just do it as complicated as humans can make it for 10 years. Because oh, you have work to do. We don't have 10 years. That's, there it is. You, you don't have 10 years to do this. I don't have 10 years to make this cover. I have to make it happen. So um, let's start simply and build from there. Um, don't get me wrong. Like All these ideas, there, there is an illustrator somewhere that could just crush this with the most amazing drawing ever. And it would be beautiful and it would be readable. But that takes a lot, a lot of time. So if you're only buying a $100 book cover, then don't expect $10,000 worth of art. Um, there, I made, I made the point by accident. You know, sometimes it's better to be lucky than smart, folks. So there are some, there dit, 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 there are some thoughts on book cover design. Uh, this video kind of happened by accident, but, um, Late night email. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was good. I'm. Uh, if you like this video, or you want me to talk about some other aspect of book cover design, or show other designs, I'm not usually at liberty. The thing about book covers is you can't really show them in progress, especially if the author has any type of like if they actually have a budget and are, uh, you know, pretty well known in some way. Like they really won't let you show their book covers. So. Um, yeah. All right. So thanks for watching the video. If you want to support me, uh, and you have a couple bucks to spare, go buy my novel. If you like psychological, psychological thrillers, black comedies, you heard me talk. That's how I write, you know? It's weird, it's dark, it's funny. The girl can cook. Links below. Uh, you can also follow me on social media and whatnot. But, uh, yeah. If you have questions, ask them in the comments. I'll get to them pretty quick. I'll make response videos and show you how to do stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, thanks. See you guys later.